to Online Church at Baker Memorial, United Methodist Church in St. Charles. I'm Pastor Kim Neese, and on behalf of myself and Pastor Mary Zajac, we welcome you here because at Baker Memorial, United Methodist Church, all are welcome. Pastor Mary will be preaching today as we celebrate the baptism of Jesus. In addition, we remember our own baptisms, so let us be thankful. Today, our liturgist is Paul Contarado, and our musicians are Jeff Hunt and Mark Edwards. We also give a shout out to Mandy Hale, Rob Hale, and Michelle Claney for all the behind the work scenes work that they do each and every week. Baker Memorial United Methodist Church is an active church, and spiritual formation is such an important role of growing in your faith. And so we have three offerings on Sunday mornings for adult recharge small group classes, as well as an online opportunity that we would love to invite you to. It's called Searching for Sundays. You can go to bakermemorialchurch.org and register for that there, or you can even go to our new church app. You can also find how to do that on our website. Well, men, we're shouting out to you. There is a men's breakfast next Sunday, January 15th. Join the men in Wiley Hall at 8 a.m. where there'll be a breakfast, a speaker, and a great devotion. It's a great time of fellowship. We hope that you can make it and invite your friends to come as well. We serve right here in the local community on the third Monday of every month at the Northern Illinois Food Bank. So we would love for you to be part of that team to make a difference in the community. That's January 16th from 9 to noon. Right now there is a dire need for blood everywhere and we are hosting a blood drive. So we encourage you to be part of that where you can donate blood to make a difference in the life of someone else. That's January 19th from 2.30 to 6.30. You can register at that tiny URL that you see on your screen. Walk-ins are also welcome. But let us know that you're coming by registering. Well, women, we also have something for you. It's a women's game day. It's going to be so much fun to play some games together and be in fellowship. Join them on January 22nd from 2 to 4, where it's going to be a great time. You can register again on your app or at bakermemorialchurch.org. Well, one thing that Baker Memorial United Methodist Church is known for in our local community is our day guest meals, which happens every Tuesday and Thursday. And it is an important aspect for all of us to come together. So if you have not had the opportunity to be able to donate groceries before, or if you have, thank you in advance for your continued donations. But we really need the whole church to come together for this. So all you have to do is go to this tiny URL and look at see what groceries are needed it's listed out there exactly what you need you bring those grocery bags into the church mid valley will take care of the rest they'll go ahead prepare the food they'll make the food serve the food and clean up afterwards so thank you for going shopping and blessing the people that come every tuesday and thursday it really is a small little community and family within our church if you have a candle in your home, we encourage you to get that now, and let's light those together. Would you please pray with me? Oh, Lord, we come before you today just thanking you that we have a safe place, a welcoming place, and a warm environment where we can come together to hear your word, to grow in our faith, to remember our baptism and how we live into it in this new year that has begun. We thank you that we have the opportunity to sing together and to pray together and to praise you for who you are in our lives and in the world. Open our hearts and our minds to what you have for us today. It's in Jesus' name we pray, and all God's children said, Amen. Let's continue our worship as we sing the song, He is Born. We'll be singing verses 1 through 3. He 
is born the holy child. Play the oboe and bagpipes merrily. He is born the holy child. Sing we all of the Savior mild. Through long ages of the past, prophets have foretold his coming. Through long ages of the past, now the time has come at last. He is born the holy child. Play the oboe and bagpipes merrily. He is born the holy child. Sing we all of the Savior mild. Oh, how lovely, oh, how pure is this perfect child of heaven. Oh, how lovely, oh, how pure, gracious gift to humankind. He is born the holy child. Play the oboe and bagpipes merrily. Is born the holy child. Sing we all of the Savior mild. Jesus, Lord of all the world, coming as a child among us. Jesus, Lord of all the world, grant to us thy heavenly Born the holy child, play the oboe and bagpipes merrily. He is born the holy child. Sing we all of the Savior mild. A reading from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 34 through 43. Today we are reading from the New Living Translation. Then Peter replied, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. In every nation he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. This is the message of good news for the people of Israel, that there is peace with God through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after John began preaching his message of baptism. And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we apostles are witnesses of all he did throughout Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him to life on the third day. Then God allowed him to appear, not to the general public, but to us whom God had chosen in advance to be his witnesses. We were those who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he ordered us to preach everywhere and to testify that Jesus is the one appointed by God to be the judge of all, the living and the dead. He is the one all the prophets testified about, saying that everyone who believes in him will have their sins forgiven through his name. This is the word of God for all people. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of your word. Help us to hear it, understand it, and by it live. We pray in the name of the Creator, the Spirit, and the Savior. Amen. Well, today is the second Sunday of the new year, and the season of celebration continues. We've had celebration after celebration lately. We celebrated the birth of Jesus on Christmas Day, often by gathering with family and friends, exchanging presents, and enjoying a feast. We also celebrated the beginning of the new year, often by gathering with family and friends, staying up a little bit too late, and enjoying yet another feast. Many people around the world celebrated the holiday of Epiphany just last Friday, where they remembered the arrival of the wise men who followed the path of a star to Bethlehem to worship Jesus and declare him as king. And guess what they did to celebrate? Right? They gathered with family and friends, they exchanged gifts, and they enjoyed a feast. And now, what I think is the final celebration of the season. Today, we celebrate the baptism of Jesus. 
Celebration of the baptism of Jesus? Some of you may be thinking that we're playing a version of that children's game, you know? One of these things is not like the others. One of these things just doesn't belong. But we're not. We may not be gathering as family and friends. We may not be exchanging gifts or even having a feast. But today is a celebration in the church. So what is there to celebrate about baptism? Today, I want to mention three things. The first has to do with the baptism of Jesus. The second has to do with baptism as it was understood shortly after the crucifixion, death, and resurrection of Christ. And the final aspect of celebration has to do with what all of this means to us today. Let's begin with a celebration of the baptism of Jesus. The Gospels tell us how Jesus was baptized. They each tell the story a little bit differently, but in total, the story is pretty well known. We hear about how Jesus was already a full-grown adult, probably near 30 years old, according to many scholars, when he came to the Jordan River to receive the baptism of repentance from John the Baptist. We hear about how John tried to refuse to baptize Jesus because there simply was no need. Repentance is a humble act of confessing the brokenness of our relationship with God due to our sin. Going into the water and being prayed over was about seeking spiritual reconciliation with God, about seeking forgiveness. And Jesus, frankly, had nothing to repent. Yet somehow, Jesus' desires prevailed, and he was baptized. When we hear the gospel stories of Jesus' baptism, we hear that something unexpected happened that day. God spoke. And God claimed Jesus as his beloved son with whom he was well pleased. And the Holy Spirit visited. He appeared looking like a dove descending on Jesus. And finally, when Jesus came up out of the water, he went directly into the wilderness to be tempted so that when he emerged from the desert, his only focus was actually on active ministry. From then on, Jesus traveled around calling disciples, preaching, teaching, healing, and doing other signs that proved that God was indeed with him and working through him. What then are we celebrating when we celebrate the baptism of Jesus? First and foremost, we're celebrating the beginning of this ministry. The events of the baptism changed the direction of Jesus' life. He went from an ordinary looking man of faith who never heard anything about in the historical record to becoming the Messiah, the chosen one of God recorded in multiple ancient historical records. Jesus wasn't anyone's Lord until after the baptism. God could have chosen a different place and time to make that transformation in Jesus' life, but God didn't. God chose baptism as the turning point. So we celebrate the baptism of Jesus today. So that's the first aspect of the celebration today. The second aspect has to do with how Baptist, baptism began to be practiced in the early days of Christian history, as it was told in the passage that we heard read today. This passage takes a completely different angle on what we have to celebrate this Sunday, where the Gospels focus on how the baptism of Jesus actually unfolded, essentially painting a picture of the events in words. This passage barely sketches the outline of the baptism itself. Instead, it focuses on the impact the gift of Jesus' baptism had years after that original event. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised if some of you are actually trying to remember how today's passage even connects to baptism. Because you know what? That word baptism is actually only used once in the whole passage that we listen to. So let me give you a little context to connect the dots. The person speaking in this passage is the Apostle Peter, and he's speaking in a most surprising place. He's in the home of a gentle, Gentile man named Cornelius. We know Peter would not have gone there by his own choice, because faithful Jewish people were not supposed to interact socially with non-Jewish people. Rather, Peter was teaching the Gentile household of Cornelius because the Holy Spirit had led him there against his every instinct about what was right and what was wrong. It's hard to explain what was wrong with this scene because we don't think this way anymore today. However, in Peter's understanding, Gentile people were ritually unclean and ritually clean and unclean things should never mix. 
If we go back to our thinking about children's games, this is kind of like one of those children's matching games. You know the ones where you turn over two cards and if they match, you get to keep them both? This is like turning over two cards, one with the face of Peter and the other with the face of Cornelius, and knowing immediately that these two things could never go together. But the Holy Spirit came to Peter, drew him to Cornelius' house, and told him to preach. And so he did, at least in a manner. Peter wasn't one who was short on words in previous passages from the book of Acts. But in this passage, he barely sketches out the life of Jesus. He says, well, you know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after John began preaching the message of baptism. And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. I am sure that some scholars would disagree with me, but these words feel appropriately awkward for the situation. They don't feel like joyous declaration of the amazing gift that baptism was for Jesus, and they surely don't really seem to celebrate the ministry of Christ. Peter goes immediately from these words about baptism right to the end with a stor story of the crucifixion. And he describes this world-changing event in similarly simple, maybe even awkward words. He says, they put him to death by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him to life on the third day. Then God allowed, allowed him to appear not to the general public, but to those whom God had chosen in advance to be his witnesses. We were those who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he'd ordered us to preach everywhere and to testify that Jesus is the one appointed by God to be the judge of all, the living and the dead. He is the one all the prophets testified about saying that everyone who believes in him will have their sins forgiven through his names. Now, I love scripture. I can find some really amazing good news in almost any passage. But even I have to say, this first sermon by Peter to the Gentile household of Cornelius leaves me just a little bit flat. It's understated. I read it and it feels like it's missing joy and purpose. It it just feels a little uncomfortable and fearful without passion. That's where the passage recommended by the standard reading schedule actually on the second Sunday of the new year actually ends. But really we cannot leave it here. We won't deeply understand what we're celebrating if we leave our discussion here things start to get very interesting, beginning in the very next sentence, because the Holy Spirit interrupts Peter's so-so sermon with a full-on miracle. Just as Peter had taught that Jesus had been anointed by the Holy Spirit at his baptism, suddenly everybody in the Gentile home of Cornelius was anointed by the Holy Spirit. It's really kind of outrageous, but those Gentiles started praising God and speaking in tongues or languages that they had no prior knowledge of. No question in my mind, nor I suspect in Peter's, this was God's work in their midst. This was God breaking down a long-standing barrier between Gentiles and the people of God. This was God making siblings in Christ out of Jewish people and Gentile people. Peter saw it happen and realized that these people, these supposedly unclean people in the room with him, should receive the gift of baptism too. So we got some water and the Gentile household of Cornelius received the gift that we celebrate today. If we extend our matching game illustration, we can see that Peter realized something absolutely astounding astounding on that day. He understood that if the first card is baptism or Jesus, the second card could be anybody at all, no matter their history, culture, or current practice. God loves the world of humanity in total, not in part. Jewish people, Gentile people, and any other kind of people included. So, there is actually an element of universalism in Christianity. But it's not actually the kind that most people think of. It's not a promise of universal salvation. It's not that 
actually at all. Rather, the universal part is a universal invitation to come and follow Jesus, to come and receive this anointing of the Holy Spirit, to be changed in the waters of baptism from living a life for yourself to living your life for God. That's the second thing that we celebrate today. All of humanity is included in God's matching game when it comes to the invitation to become children of God. I hope you can understand how barrier shattering and faith changing that moment was. The Spirit asked Peter to take an inconceivable risk. He declared all people clean, no one excluded. The moment recorded in the scripture would cause arguments within the community for years to come. In fact, even through to today, when for whatever reason we still want to draw a boundary of inclusion based not on evidence of the Holy Spirit's presence but rather on any other number of criteria. So that's already a lot to celebrate. We celebrate the baptism of Jesus that began his ministry and the opening of baptism to all people. Finally, we come to the point of celebrating the gift of our own baptism. If you've already been baptized, this is the day we remember how important that moment was for us. This is a time we remember that we either came on our own or were brought by someone responsible for us to be blessed by this gift of baptism in water and the Spirit. Today we celebrate that our sins are not only forgivable, but forgiven if we are willing to recognize that offer. Today we celebrate that baptism has grafted us into God's family and bound us together as siblings in Christ. Today, we celebrate that within each baptized person, there is a manifestation of the Spirit. It may be small. We may have tried to ignore it our whole lives, but at some point, we received the gift of God's Spirit that will never leave us nor forsake us and wants more than anything to guide our lives. It's a lot to take in. It's a lot to celebrate, not so much with parties and gifts, but with prayer, an inner sense of joy, and at some level, a remembrance of the responsibility that baptism brings to live our lives in a way that accepts and reflects the gifts we have received. Baptism is a gift that comes with expectations. So when we celebrate our baptisms, we often find ourselves moved to just a bit of repentance as well. Now, some of you may not have received this wonderful gift as of yet. If not, I'd invite you to prayerfully consider. And I offer actually to make myself available to help you discern if it is right for you. But even so, there's plenty of celebration for you too. The gift of baptism gave the Holy Spirit to people across the ages so that they would record the scriptures and write beautiful spiritual music that forms our souls still today. The gift of baptism caused faithful people to build hospitals and schools so that all of God's children could receive both care and an education. The gift of baptism built our beautiful church community and still drives us to serve Christ here near and far away in every way we can. This truly is a day for celebration. So I invite you to remember your baptism and be grateful as this season of celebrations and holidays comes to a close. I invite you to take a moment today to remember your baptism by filling perhaps a small bowl of water and even holding your hands or under running water to give you a physical reminder of the gift you have received. You may want to just touch that water lightly or you might even want to retrace the sign of the cross that was placed on your forehead when you were baptized or when you will be baptized in the future. And then I suggest you take a moment to just thank God and to ask God for guidance on how to live into your baptism most fully. And let me be the first and perhaps the only person you've ever had wish you a happy remembrance of Baptism Day. God bless. Amen.
is that time that we come together as a community to pray. And we want to know your prayer concerns and praises as well. So if you go to bakermemorialchurch.org and you leave your attendance there, leave a prayer request or praise, as well as online giving. In order to do all the mission and ministry work that Baker Memorial does, it takes all of us coming together. So thank you in advance for your donations, your tithes, and your offerings. Would you please join me as we pray together? Oh, glorious God, we praise you and thank you for the love and grace, the humility and mercy, and forgiveness and healing that you show us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Today, as we remember the baptism of the Lord, may we also remember our own baptisms and be thankful unto you. Give us the eyes to see and a heart to understand the gift of baptism as the sign of your love and power in our lives. Empower us to live out our baptisms each and every day to serve you and others with a gracious and generous heart as we serve Christ here near and far away. We seek reconciliation for those who are undergoing relational struggles. Open our hearts to share your love, even when it may be difficult. We pray for those who are oppressed in any way, those who are under-resourced, those who are rejected by society, those who are in harm's way, those who feel alone in the world, and those who can't find affordable housing or employment. Open our mouths to speak your truths that lead toward justice. Pour out your spirit upon us in fresh ways. Fill us with the power to boldly proclaim your name. May the same spirit overwhelm and empower us to do even greater works and to see your kingdom established in our community and the works of darkness destroyed. We seek your comfort for those who are in hospice. May they and their families feel your peace during this time of transition. We seek your comfort upon those dealing with loss. We pray for your healing touch upon those in the hospital, recovering from an illness, seeking treatment, or dealing with mental illness. We pray for our leaders around the world. We pray for professional and personal caregivers. As we begin this new year, let us be reminded by the new life that begins with Jesus Christ in our lives and in the world. We come together now to pray the prayer that your Son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, as we come to the close of our worship today, may you be reminded that God is with us. May you be thankful for your baptism and live into it each and every day as we live in and through Jesus Christ in our lives. Have a great week. We'll see you next week.